context. So, yeah. Okay, so it all started in the mid 1980s uh, when my husband and I moved to our current uh, house in South Etobicoke, and we chose the location we did because of its proximity to a neighborhood school. Um, to our surprise, uh, the school board, which at that point was the Etobicoke Board of Education, closed the school down uh, just as the community was beginning to turn over from having had uh, a number of the children that had been born and raised in it over the, um, you know, the previous uh, baby boom generation um, leave. So enrollment had dropped drastically by the mid 80s and the Etobicoke Board was closing schools all over Etobicoke. We had the steepest level of declining enrollment in any board in Canada and that included my local school. However, I knew and my neighbors knew that there were babies being born and families moving in. And we knew that there were children um, in the area that were going to be of school age by the time the five-year lease that the, the school was under um, had expired. So we were banging on the doors of the Etobicoke Board of Education to try to get them to listen to this and, um, and consider breaking that lease um, and or at least allowing the lease to expire and then reopening the schools but to no avail um, the planners were telling us they had the census data they knew the demographics there were enough children to run a good program so at any rate after a certain amount of banging on the walls uh, i decided that there was only one way forward and that was um, i had to run for office as a trustee and get on the board and work from the inside uh, to have my voice heard, which is what I did. So I ran in the 1988 election um, and I won. Um, I won by 20 votes. <laughs> I did not win by a landslide, but I won and that was the most important thing. And, um, and then I proceeded to get deeply involved in not just the, this local issue of reopening the school, which did happen, by the way, the school was reopened in 1990 and, um, and now is uh, overly full and has a portable, it's got a school-based daycare in it that I was on the original board of directors of. We managed to get ministry funding to get, um, to get a daycare, um, to get two rooms inside of the school renovated. Uh, so they could become a daycare which is run by the parents of the children that go to the that go to the school. So that was a huge success story for our community, and um, for me it was it was a a real revelation because coming from a background in environmental science, I had not been exposed to education before, but I found that the ideas. Uh, that I was seeing all around me as a trustee in terms of how children learn, what constitutes an effective school. These were all questions that, that really affected me very deeply, that made me eager to learn more. One of the most, um, I think, the most life-changing experiences I had as a, as a trustee was just sitting on hearings that took place to excuse uh, students from having to attend school um, and because they had, in effect, dropped out. Uh, so there's a process that uh, the board allows students to go through um, to, uh, to work with them when they are, you know, on the verge, when they're disengaged on the verge of leaving school. And, um, and that process begins with a hearing that's actually conducted by trustees. So I took part in many of those hearings, I chaired many of those hearings, and I heard and saw many of the same profiles in the students coming in front of me. Um, I saw students who, whose educational struggles were really rooted in uh, the problems that they brought with them from the home environment. I saw parents who were struggling to put food on the table, um, who were working two and three jobs, um, to keep their kids in stable housing um, and uh, single parents in, in many cases uh, who were trying desperately to help their kids but didn't know what to do. So those social problems that I saw at the root of the educational problems uh, really impressed me because um, it said to me that the first thing that needs to happen for children to experience educational success is they have to have a stable home environment with food, um, you know, uh, sufficient housing, um, and enough um, 
enough capacity on the part of the parents to take care of them. And in many families, that was just simply not the case. And as a result, the kids were uh, dropping out and, and losing the value of you know, a secondary education, which they need to go <laughs> on and uh, create a place for themselves in society. So that led to my interest in child welfare. And after I left off being a trustee, I, um, I went back to university. I did a Master of Teaching program at the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education. And after that, ended up working at the University of Toronto in the Faculty of Social Work um, with the Centre of Excellence for Child Protection. So this is a this is a, a organization that was funded by the federal government that worked on a national basis in both official languages um, to take child welfare research and translate it into um, easy to use information that child protection workers could use to uh, advance their professional knowledge. And also we were working in many other areas of policy to do with child welfare, specifically indigenous child welfare because Indigenous children are vastly overrepresented in the child welfare system. Better stop that. <laughs>